today event. So now we'll start with our first session uh, by Mr. Luis uh, Beltran, who is a Microsoft MVP in uh, developer and AI technologies. Wow, so he is MVP in two category. And uh, today he will uh, demonstrate us how to build a responsible AI model in uh, Azure Machine Learning. Uh, session seems uh, quite interesting and uh, let's come in. So please feel free to ask any questions uh, via QA. Uh, so yes, Luis, uh, you can share your screen and stop sharing your screen. So uh, Luis, I'm making you live. Uh, OK. Yeah, so now you are already live. Thank you. Perfect. So thank you, uh, Satya and Kripal for uh, such a nice uh, presentation and keynote about the event. Also for inviting me to collaborate in today's uh, Global AI Developer Days in Philippines. So thank you also everyone for joining this uh, conference. So let's get uh, started because you know time goes fast. So uh, as a brief introduction, when we talk about uh, artificial intelligence, we usually uh, refer to machine learning models that are used uh, within some system to perhaps do some uh, automation. For example, you, you know there are uh, self-driving cars and uh, they take images using camera, using sensors. They notice uh, what is uh, surrounding this, this car. So, this data can be used by a machine learning model to make uh, predictions. Uh, so it can detect that uh, nearby there is a tree and it must avoid it, of course. So th they, will be, there will be some decisions made, which is there is a tree, there is a human, so the car must avoid collision with, with them. Um, and yeah, this whole system is artificial intelligence. Although sometimes there can be risks that can be unfair or seen as a black box that makes decisions for humans. Um, perhaps we can think of another model that analyzes uh, people's uh, information like uh, salary, like age, uh, nationality, gender, and so on. It decides, this AI model decides uh, whether to grant them a loan or not. In this case, uh, human participation is a limit or it depends on those decisions made by the system. And this can be a problem because it can lead to many potential problems. And companies need to define a clear uh, approach to the use of AI. Well, responsible AI is a governance framework meant to do exactly that. So welcome to my session, Building Responsible AI Models in Azure Machine Learning. My name is uh, Luis Beltran. I am a Microsoft uh, MVP in, uh, yeah, well now three categories, but just a second because I need to connect this computer. <laughs> okay, yes, uh, just recently I got a third category. Well, it's a uh, uh, Azure AI and developer technologies and well I am a Mexican who is currently living in Czech Republic uh, because I am pursuing my PhD in engineering informatics at Thomas Bata University in Slin. Um, mostly my my duty is uh, or research is about computer vision but of course machine learning is also uh, related. So here you have my contact details in case uh, you would like to uh, reach out. You maybe have some question about this topic or uh, maybe .NET because I, in my free time, I also work with cloud computing, uh, mobile applications like uh, using Xamarin or .NET MAUI now, right? Um, and of course, my, my, my work is uh, the research, uh, PhD studies, and also I am a lecturer, professor, at uh, this university and also in Mexico. All right, so enough talking about me. <laughs> so let's uh, start with some uh, foundations, very basic concepts, and then of course we will do practical session. 
So what is responsible AI? It is the practice of uh, designing and developing and even deploying artificial intelligence with a good uh, intent in order to uh, empower businesses, employees, and get a positive impact in society, in customers, in a fair, safe, and ethical way. And this uh, enables organizations to build trust and create a more secure artificial intelligence. As we, uh, or, or as I said at the beginning, AI is the product of many decisions made, made by uh, people who develop and implement them. From the purpose of uh, the system to the way people interact with AI system, responsible AI can help to guide this decision toward more beneficial uh, outcomes. So that means that people and goals are important. They are the core of the system design decisions. And it uh, respects values like fairness, reliability, and transparency. Evaluating and researching machine learning models before their implementation is also uh, an important part of reliable and responsible AI development. Many companies, many organizations uh, consider responsible AI uh, really important nowadays. One of them is Microsoft. This company has developed a responsible AI standard, which is a framework for uh, building uh, AI systems according to six key principles, fairness, reliability and safety, privacy and security, inclusiveness, transparency and accountability. These principles are the foundations of a trustworthy approach to artificial intelligence. Uh, because nowadays uh, we depend or we rely on AI. Uh, many products like, for example, the smart uh, fridges, right? The smart uh, TVs or maybe some uh, GPS that decides what is the best path to reach some destination. And it can make decisions based on uh, data that is, or information that is happening at the same moment. For example, if there is some accident, it will recommend you to uh, follow another path. So, well, uh, we might not cover all the principles, all the six, but let's talk at least about two and demonstrate them with a practical uh, way uh, in Azure Machine Learning. So, one of the most important is Privacy. AI systems uh, such as facial recognition or voice tagging can definitely be used to breach an individual's privacy and thus threaten security. Uh, because the online footprint of a person can be used to track or influence the preferences of other people. And of course, this is a serious concern that needs to be addressed. Uh, nowadays, you know, it is quite popular that there are fake news or even deep fakes. Do you know about deep fakes? Like, for example, replacing there is uh, original video or picture, and with a deep fake, you can combine someone else's uh, face and merge. Uh, both together. Of course, this can be used for funny scenarios like you appearing in a movie, famous movie, but on the other hand, it can also be used to damage uh, some person's uh, reputation. So, so yeah, there is uh, some uh, misuse in uh, AI systems. So there is a need to establish a framework that protects individuals' privacy and security. 
So, uh, and you know, uh, for example, here in Europe, uh, there are uh, laws like the GDPR and all system, all systems software must comply with these privacy laws and they require transparency about how the data is collected, used and also stored. And consumers or customers uh, will always uh, have the control in choosing how the data, their data, is used. And well, uh, if go, we go to some data science projects like machine learning, we know that we must uh, analyze some data. And perhaps we might not notice, but this data can include sensitive personal details uh, that must remain private. Uh, in practice, uh, sometimes we uh, publish uh, reports and this includes uh, data aggregations like uh, average or zoom totals. And you will think that the aggregation provides privacy because it is not uh, revealing the individual data values. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, it just represents the average of all the individuals. So it is not tied or bound to a specific one. However, imagine that there is some case where we uh, analyze, of course, the data and we uh, combine, we got some uh, aggregations. And in, in this case, maybe we have uh, 10 par participants of some uh, study. And we, uh, let's say, uh, obtain information about a salary, about a, a location. And the aggregated salary can tell us the average salary, let's say, in Seattle. So uh, in general, the average salary is 96,000 uh, US dollars. But we also got some other report where we know that 10% of the uh, person or individuals in the study are from Seattle. So we can, of course, calculate and we can determine that there are 10 participants, 10% 10 of them are from Seattle. There is one participant from Seattle and we already know their salary. So yeah, uh, uh, probably this is an extreme scenario, but it can happen and we we didn't notice. So how can we protect this kind of uh, data, right? Or, or re, we, how can we protect or add some layer uh, that uh, doesn't affect the individual's privacy? Well, there are different techniques and one of them is differential privacy, which uh, the, the objective is to protect individual data values by adding a statistical noise to the analysis process. The, the, there, are, there is some uh, complex mathematics uh, involved in adding the noise, but the main idea is that data aggregations stay statistically consistent with the actual data values but there is some random variation that makes it impossible to tie results to individual values. This noise doesn't affect at all our uh, results, but uh, now uh, it, it is not easy to, 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 to identify an, an specific uh, individual. And well, we can use in our uh, machine learning uh, project some uh, packages, two open source packages that can uh, enable this uh, differential privacy is uh, Counterfeit, which is an open source project uh, that you use with common line and generic uh, automation layers to uh, simulate uh, cyber attacks against AI system and verify their security. But there is a second one, which is known as Smart Noise. It is a project uh, co-developed by Microsoft 
that contains components for building differential private systems that are global. And you can uh, learn more in this uh, link, smartnoise.org. Uh, this uh, toolkit uh, supports training machine learning models like linear logistic regression, but it is also compatible with advanced open source training libraries like TensorFlow Privacy. And the goal is to create an analysis with a noise that is being added to your source data. A smart noise uh, takes care of most of the complex uh, mathematics uh, that are involved, as I said, in, in adding this, this noise. But there is an important element, let's say, that uh, we must uh, learn or know about it, uh, which is an epsilon, epsilon value. Epsilon represents the amount of variation caused by adding this noise. So we can configure how much noise uh, we want to add to our data. This, this parameter helps us to do that. But there is a relationship with, with the accuracy. So uh, the, the epsilon value applies privacy to every member in the data. If we pro uh, typically we will uh, use values between zero and one. And if we provide low epsilon value, you will get the most privacy. However, the accuracy uh, will be reduced uh, when you do the data aggregations. And on the other hand, if you use higher epsilon value, yes, the accuracy will increase. However, the privacy uh, will be uh, less. So it might be easy to identify individual or in the end, it would be like you are not applying differential privacy at all. Let's uh, do some uh, example. So yeah, I, I can share the, the, the slides later, but I already have uh, here my uh, Azure Machine Learning Workspace with the, uh, let's say, some, some uh, notebook. Just give me a second, please. OK, yes. So in, in this notebook, right, uh, I already have some uh, diabetes, let's say, uh, data set, which uh, includes uh, data about uh, age, for example, of uh, people and also some uh, sensitive uh, features like number of pregnancies or protein level and so. And the first step is to install this uh, package. So I already have the code uh, prepared, so I will just copy paste, but of course it is important to notice what we are doing. So let's uh, start by installing this um, package, OpenDP Smart Noise, and this is the version that I'm installing. And after that, we can just load our data uh, normally as we would do. So yeah, here you can see some uh, summary of our data. We have, uh, yeah, th this is uh, aggregation. We have mean, uh, standard deviation, minimum value, maximum value, and other, other data. And we have different features like pregnancies, uh, plasma glucose, uh, serum insulin, and others, and even age. Please notice this, uh, this value. So the mean age of all individuals is 30.1341, uh, right? So yeah, this is our real data. But now let's perform some analysis. So for this, we need to import a package, which is uh, OpenDP Smart Noise Core. And yeah, we will use this uh, alias SN. And we need to prepare some analysis. So I will, as I said, uh, copy the, the code and I'm uh, sorry, I will paste it here. Yeah, so, so first we just obtain uh, our columns. The, we specify the range between zero and 120 years, let's say, for age. And yeah, we, we 
uh, take all our data. So samples is the uh, length of all our data set. And now I add this code. Please, here we create an analysis object. So we perform analysis of and we provide the data. So in our um, smart noise object, we have data set. And in data set, we specify where is our information and also the columns. After that, we specify the data type of our uh, column that of interest, which is age. So we said, well, we will consider this one as float value. And after that, we can calculate a differential privacy aggregation. For example, differential privacy of uh, a mean, sorry, the, the mean of a specific feature, which is the age. So in this case, we uh, yeah, specify our uh, data set, which is the uh, age, right? Yeah, the, the column, sorry, H. After that, we add the privacy usage object, and here we specify the epsilon value. So we are considering this uh, uh, 0 0.50 value, so in the middle, right? And we also need to specify the bounds. So we have lower and upper bound. And finally, all our information, which is uh, all the data. We might just select 80%, 50%, or in this case, all our data. And we perform the analysis with the release uh, function. And after this analysis is done, we can compare both the actual data and the private uh, or differential private uh, modification. So let's run it. And here you can see, yes, from the summary of the data, we already know that, uh, okay, I will do this a bit larger, yes. Uh, we, we know that uh, the mean is 30.1341. And by adding some noise, the mean age, uh, differential private, is 30.096, which, yeah, it's not exactly the same value. Uh, it's now uh, noisy data, but still, uh, useful for our analysis and it doesn't affect at all. Well, I already explained the relationship right between the, the different epsilon values. So, for example, if I increase this value to, let's say, 75 and I uh, perform this analysis again, you will see that, uh, well, the, it seems that there was not so much uh, difference at all. So, maybe I will try higher value like. 99. <laughs> uh, let's see. Right. And yeah, well, now you see that this data is closer to the uh, mean age. So, but however, um, it might be easy to identify uh, some, some value. And if we decrease it, like one, yeah, there is a bigger gap or difference between these values. So I will keep half, right? And well, we can also observe, uh, and of course, we can now use this value for our uh, reports or further calculations. We can also uh, compare the current data with uh, the differential private uh, information. So in this case, we can create some plots. So uh, in, now we have some uh, like uh, histogram. So so yeah, I will run this. Oh, sorry. And yeah, this is our data. This is how the information is uh, distributed. So we see that there are a lot of uh, people between maybe 20 and 30 years and so or 20 or 25. Yeah, we, we can see the information. This is the real data. But now what happens if we actually uh, add noise to all our members? So here, we can add a new uh, plot, a new histogram. So here we, we also have a differential, differential private uh, histogram. 
and we provide some information. Now we will consider that the age is an integer value. So again, we specify the bounds, lower, upper bound. And we again uh, require this parameter, privacy usage. So again, epsilon 0 0.5, let's say. And we perform the analysis. And we can create a plot. And here we have, uh, we will have second bar. So we got um, first the, the, the same bar that I previously showed. But now let's add here in second parameter, a H histogram dot value. And we can add some label. Private. Okay, so let's run it. And you can observe here that there is some uh, slight modification. This uh, information is not exactly the, the, the same. You, you might see that uh, there is some uh, differences like, okay, here, uh, how many members are about, about 60? There is less here. Yeah, so, so we, we actually, uh, also uh, modify this uh, information uh, a bit. Yes, as I said, it might be not noticeable at all, but there is different data. And we can also um, uh, like uh, modify other uh, data or find some uh, relationship. You know, covariance is the analysis of comparing or what is the relationship between two uh, features, two uh, columns. So let's say that we want to find if uh, diastolic blood pressure is correlated with age or not at all. So let's uh, do it. Ah, I think. Yes. Okay. So yeah, let's uh, add this uh, next code. Give us a second. So again, we perform some analysis and we got a differential private covariance. We uh, got uh, two uh, elements, two columns. One of them is age and second, diastolic blood pressure. We specify the privacy usage. Maybe now we consider 1.0, but we can say 0 0.5 or whatever, right? And then the bounds of first property age and second uh, property diastolic blood pressure. And we can print, of course, the covariance. So I will add this other line, HBP of scalar dot value. And let's run it. And you can observe that uh, we got actual covariance, H72, and differential privacy co cover covariance sorry, is 14. So that means since uh, this value is uh, positive, older patients have higher blood pressure and younger patients uh, have uh, less or few uh, blood pressure. And well, this, uh, this uh, let's say, uh, package is quite powerful. You can even create SQL queries. So in this case, uh, first I'm going to uh, add some, um, let's say, package, which is a metadata, collection metadata, and we need to specify some information. We can use a YAML file, which I believe I have. Um, okay, I, I can show the slides. Uh, yeah. This YAML file basically contains the information. So we got uh, the diabetes, uh, let's say, data set. Uh, we, we say, okay, there are, there are 10,000 rows and these are the different uh, columns. We got patient ID, which is an integer. And uh, yeah, this is the private ID. Then there is pregnancies column. Uh, the, we specify data type and also the bounds, lower, upper. And we do the same for all. So we need this information. We need to provide it to our collection metadata object. And we read it, of course. And after we, uh, we, we obtain it, yes, this is what 
is uh, obtained by, by the by the collection metadata uh, class. And now we can create a pandas reader. Actually, uh, two of them. One is with the original data, diabetes, and the second one is a, a differential private one. So in this case, we specify yes our pandas reader object, the first one, the original data, the metadata, and the uh, epsilon that you already know. Let's run it. And the readers will be ready. So this, uh, let's say, metadata is already obtained. And now we can uh, prepare some uh, SQL query, like we want to obtain uh, diabetic column, average age, that is the mean, you know, you already know, um, from uh, our data set. And in this case, we have to uh, execute the query. So private reader execute query and we can print the information. So let's do it. And you can observe this uh, information. So we got uh, diabetic uh, with, uh, this is one information, false and 27, 22. And second is for true, uh, uh, let's say values 36, right? And what happens if we run the same query, but with the original data set. So this is the information. So for a person of 27 years, more or less, they are not diabetic and we obtain the same information. But you can see that uh, the value is a bit different because of noise, right? And a person ab just above 36 years, uh, has unfortunately developed diabetes. And we also obtain the same result with the differential private uh, data set. So yeah, this is quite, quite uh, useful. And well, the, the final demo of this section is uh, something that I already demonstrated, which is the epsilon value. Well, it is quite common to use values between zero and one, but actually you can use any value, but the standard is uh, yeah to 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 use values between zero and one. Mm, but of course, you, you can apply this uh, epsilon in all our previous examples, and it will be uh, the, the same. So we can uh, modify or find the covariance, uh, create some uh, charts, or uh, calculate some different. Um, uh, different uh, like histograms or charts and compare uh, what is happening with between original data and noisy data, statistically noisy data, but still uh, with uh, no impact at all on accuracy. And we can protect this way the uh, user's information. Yes, so we already saw this. And well, I know I, I have like 12 minutes or 11. So, um, I will just uh, describe another, this one is very fast, I will just describe another um, uh, principle of responsible AI, which is fairness. You know that uh, machine learning models uh, can be used to inform decisions that affect people's lives. So maybe there is a machine learning model that influences the approval for a loan, insurance, or some other financial services or maybe acceptance into a school. And these decisions can be critical and maybe they are made by some machine learning models. So it is important that both the uh, company or organization, the school and the customers can have confidence that these machine learning models make fair predictions and they don't discriminate against subsets of population based on ethnicity, gender, age, or other factors like physical disability. Uh, in uh, Azure Machine Learning, for example, there is a responsible AI dashboard, and it, it has different components. One of them is the fairness assessment that enables data scientists to assess model 
in a fair and square way, regardless of, uh, oh, sorry, by considering sensitive data like gender, ethnicity, age. This responsible AI dashboard provides a single interface to help you implement responsible AI in practice. And it brings together different responsible AI tools in different categories. But for now, let's focus on fairness. So uh, we can use the fair length package to analyze a model and explore if there is some disparity in prediction performance from different subsets of data. So for this, we also have another, um, another uh, notebook. Right. In this one, I will not uh, type anything. I will just uh, run. Well, uh, maybe I will just show the the data because the result because it, it will take some some time to do this. But well, we we start of course by installing this uh, uh, SDK uh, Azure ML Contrib Fairness, and after that, okay, yeah, we can also upgrade further if we need to do. Then we train our model the usual way, as we would uh, do all the time. Uh, so you can observe again our diabetes uh, data set. Uh, we, uh, we, we use the decision tree classifier. Yes, so yeah, we do it. And after that, we are ready to evaluate if this model is fair or not by comparing or selecting different sensitive feature values. So in this case, we use a mix of uh, metric functions, scikit-learn and also fair-learn to compare or calculate performance values. So you can uh, observe that uh, we are using scikit-learn to calculate accuracy, recall, and precision. And we use fair-learn for selection rate and metric frames. Oops, sorry. <laughs> All right, so yes. So after that, uh, here, yeah, we, we can group the metrics. So we can observe uh, selection rate, accuracy, recall, uh, and so. But there is the uh, dashboard which can help us actually to 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 observe. Uh, the, the data, let's say, in a better way. So we can create a fairness dashboard element. We specify what is our data, what, what are the sensitive features, like age, for example. Then we also got the original data, that is the, 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 the results, and also the prediction for our diabetes model. And after we around this fairness dashboard, we can, we will obtain some link that when we uh, visit it, we will see that we can uh, select, yes, sensitive feature, in this case it, it is age, we can compare some performance metric like uh, recall, so the recall means the, the true posit positives, right, uh, how many uh, members of some uh, group um, let's say develop diabetes for, for this uh, example. And that is, there are fairness metrics, but I will explain this one later. Here, I want you to notice that, for example, we, are, we have selected uh, two uh, subsets. Um, people over 50 years and younger people, younger than 50 years. So you can observe that for younger people, only 30% of uh, the, this group is, uh, let's say, develops diabetes. And on the other hand, over 50%, uh, they develop uh, diabetes. So you, you might consider that, for example, our classes are uh, unbalanced. If you are over 50 years, it is more probable that you will develop diabetes, but maybe the model is not fair at all. It will tell you that, uh, yes, you will develop diabetes, mostly because you are part of this group, 
but perhaps age is not the most uh, relevant uh, feature uh, at all, right? So we need that this, we, we need to mitigate this uh, fairness. We need to set maybe uh, groups that the difference between the selection rate is uh, uh, similar between these these groups because well this is just some example about diabetes what 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 happens if it is about uh, selecting you for loan or not so yeah that that will be some some problem and well yeah this uh, dashboard at the beginning when you click on the link uh, it will take you to to this let's say uh, wizard kind of wizard sorry. So, so you select sensitive feature, performance metric, fairness metrics, and yes, you obtain this. And well, very quickly, because we got only four, four minutes, prepare your questions, of course. <laughs> so in order to mitigate unfairness, we can select different algorithms like exponential gradient, grid search, and also threshold optimizer. Basically, for example, the idea is to minimize the optimal, uh, sorry, uh, to maximize the optimal trade-off uh, of predictive performance and fairness disparity. And you also apply some constraint like uh, demographic parity or equalized odds. For example, equalized odds ensures that models that exhibit similar true and false positive rates, uh, they, uh, let's say, uh, get uh, better uh, results. So this is some codes that we can apply. So please uh, notice that we have the selected grid search. And in this case, we will, uh, let's say, and also equalize all constraints. And we will uh, train 20 different models. And the idea is that every model will have uh, different recall values and also different uh, selection rates. And the best models will be found here with high recall and also very uh, small demographic parity difference. That is, for example, we, we, we found some, some model that, as you can see, the selection rate of younger than 50 years old people is 29 and over 50 is 35%. The, the, the difference or the gap is uh, reduced from at the beginning, if you remember, it was 30 and 70, and now is 25 and 35. So we actually improve uh, the fairness of these models, but we actually obtain some others. So yes, uh, you, you, you need to be like, uh, uh, careful, right? Say uh, we, we can select different uh, algorithms and also different uh, constraints in order to obtain uh, different uh, results. Uh, for example, this other one has a high. Uh, the, 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 here, this, this will be the worst uh, results, of course, right? Um, high parity difference between the, the, the groups and also low uh, recall value. And well, uh, this uh, was a bit uh, fast, a bit quick, but hopefully uh, it is a uh, uh, nice uh, introduction for you. Just as a reminder, you know, uh, consider that there are also other uh, principles that are relevant, that are important for consideration uh, besides fairness and uh, yes, um, the differential privacy or privacy. Uh, we also have transparency, for example, to uh, explain what our models do so everyone can understand uh, how decisions are being made and also inclusiveness, which is uh, kind of related with uh, fairness, right? Uh, to, to, to consider all uh, gender, uh, races, group age groups and so. So, well, that brings me to the end of my presentation. So thank you very much for your attention. And please, if you have any questions, I will be uh, more than happy to try to answer them.
Thank you, uh, Mr. Luis. Uh, it was really a great session and uh, also I can uh, observe or I can see like you have put much effort uh, for this session, so I'm sure uh, this session is going to be helpful for our attendees and I check uh, since I could not see any questions uh, from attendees, so I think uh, uh, let's move to our next session. So uh, thank you. Thank you once again, Luis. Yes, see you. Have a nice day. Enjoy the event and please uh, feel free to reach out if uh, you have any 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 issues, any questions. Yeah, my email is there. So have a nice day. Sure, Enjoy thank the you. Event. Thank you. Yes, so um, now uh, we'll proceed to our next uh, session. So uh, next session will be uh, introduction to machine learning by Mr. David Patrick. Uh, he's also a Microsoft MVP with uh, 30 plus years of experience and also uh, MCT since 2001. Wow. Yeah, so um, it will be really good uh, and uh, I'm excited to learn something from him also. So ML.NET is another hot topic in the .NET ecosystem. Uh, it gives us capabilities to develop uh, machine learning or AI models inside the .NET application and we'll see it how so let's start and uh, please feel free to uh, feel free if you have any question so uh, now i will um, share so yes uh, mr patrick now uh, you are live awesome thank you very much appreciate it thank you so welcome everyone this is my talk intro to machine learning with net my name is dave patrick i'm a MVP, Microsoft Certified Trainer, Subject Matter Expert. I work for a company called DSA Inc. So if anyone's interested, come check us out on our website, dsainc.com. I also teach at a couple colleges here on the East Coast of the United States. I'm uh, 